What's up guys and welcome back. On today's episode, we're gonna install this Thermaltake Water 3.0 CPU cooler. We're gonna replace an Intermax CPU cooler. It's about two years old and the fans are very noisy. So this should be an easy install. So guys, when you're looking to buy a CPU cooler, make sure the hose from the radiator to the CPU fan is long enough. And to install a radiator on the front face of a mid-size case or a full-size case, you will need a longer hose. So when buying a CPU cooler, choose wisely. So guys, when purchasing the CPU cooler, we had a few different criteria that we had to meet. Obviously, hose length was very important, a dual fan radiator, a self-contained system, which means less maintenance, and it had to be compatible with the LGA 2011 socket. And lastly, we wanted to keep our price below $130. So we chose a Thermaltake Water 3.0 240 all-in-one liquid cooling system. And I want to give a shout out to our newest Patreon member, Kev from ClickTech. And if you're looking for quality tech videos, like unboxings, tech reviews, PC builds, and how-to guides, then be sure to check out ClickTech and you'll find ClickTech in our featured section on our homepage. And don't forget, every new Patreon member gets a personal shout out from me. And our memberships are as little as $2 a month. And guys, don't forget, when you hit subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon too. That way you'll be notified when we post a new video. But we have close to 200 videos to choose from. So this is everything you get with the Thermaltake Water 3.0 cooling system. You get two fans, the radiator, wire connectors, brackets and screws for both AMD and Intel sockets. This install is for the Intel LGA2011 socket. Let's set it up. Okay, so this is how the bracket's gonna go on. You can put it on just about any way. You can turn this if you'd like to where it's facing different, but I want this to be eye level and obviously upright. I don't want it to be crooked. So this should be perfect. And like I said, this hose length is pretty good. We shouldn't have any issues. It's long enough and it should be okay. Where the hoses connect to the CPU cooler, they can rotate left and right, which makes it more flexible and adjustable for a multitude of unique PC builds. However, if the hose connection was static and didn't move, this would not work for our PC. Now, one thing before we put this bracket on, if we had to put this bracket on, I'm not, I'm not sure we'll have to use this, but we'll see, is that we have to make sure these are all out. This is for the 2011 socket. So we gotta make sure those are all facing out so that the, that bracket will fit on here. And, uh, but I think the bracket I have currently will probably just work. We'll just won't even worry about this. So put the Intel bracket onto the CPU cooler, connect this ring and snap it in. And make sure to avoid touching the thermal paste on the cooler. I wish I did, it's messy. Now let's go ahead and connect the two fans to the radiator. All right, this is how we're gonna install it. RGB wires are out of the way. We have one going out this way and one going out this way. And we actually I may, hold on, I may turn this so it's even easier. Yeah, we'll do it that way. And they're still out of the way, no problem. Okay, that's how we're gonna do it. Simply mount the two fans with the eight screws provided. And just a heads up, the whole locations for the screws have a soft kind of foam gasket which helps reduce noise when the fans are turning. What's nice about the controller is a separate mode button, color button, and speed button. It's pretty cool. So now connect both fans to this 3-in-1 cable that connects to the fan controller on the motherboard. And the RGB connections are a daisy chain connection, one after the other. So just a quick rundown. These skinny wires here are the RGB wires that connect to this RGB controller. And we'll have to plug this into the power supply. And these are the fan controller connections, which will connect to the motherboard controller. All right guys, the first thing you wanna do is turn off the computer and get everything shut down and unplug everything. And then we'll uh, remove the old Intermax and install the new thermal take. Whenever you do any work on a computer, Always shut it down. Then turn the power off at the back of the PSU and unplug the wire that goes to the PSU. And make sure to clear a large area so you can work on the computer easily. Okay, let's go ahead and remove 
the Intermax. And guys, I always recommend using anti-static gloves. You don't want to have any static charges. You know, it's not good for components, computers. So remove the front cover and the side cover of the PC case. You'll need access to both areas. Okay, next we're gonna remove the old Intermax CPU cooler. And we'll start by removing the radiator. The radiator is attached to the front panel. And now we need to remove the CPU cooler from the socket. And this cooler is secured with two screws. Next, unplug the RGB connections and the fan controller connections. And you may want to take note or take a picture of how everything is connected. This can give you a reference when you install the new CPU cooler. So out with the old, bye bye, and in with the new. So next, we need to remove this bracket that the Intermax CPU cooler was attached to. We won't need it. Okay, next we'll install the CPU cooler. First, install the radiator to the front of the PC. It's connected with eight screws and eight washers. And of course, I forgot to install the washers. No worries, I'll go back and install them later. And one thing I forgot to do is put the washers in. So I'm just gonna put these washers in one at a time. Unscrew one, put a washer in. Sorry about that. And it's supposed to look <laughs> in the washer. Yeah. See it right there. Get all the washers and screws in, all eight. Okay, we're gonna be using these for the 2011. That's what we have, our socket. These are a little longer, obviously, so we're not using these. So get rid of those. And we'll see if we need this bracket or not. Uh, we may not. I'm gonna try and install this without this bracket. I already have one on the, on the motherboard already. So let's give it a shot. All right, so they should just screw into here. Like that, yeah. So screw in the short side of the standoff into the CPU socket. And just like I thought, we're not gonna need that bracket I was talking about. This makes the install even easier. And guys, remember, hit subscribe to keep this channel alive. You gotta make sure that the short part Goes in, not the long. Now let's go ahead and test this out. Yeah, it looks like we're good to go. Next, install the CPU cooler to the CPU bracket with the four connectors provided. I want to tighten this pretty good, but don't over tighten. There we go. Okay, we're all hooked up here as far as just the hardware. So I'm going to plug this in, CPU fan into the motherboard, and then we'll start hooking up the power and RGBs. Should take a few minutes. And then we'll power this on. All right, the CPU fan is right up there. I'll be plugging this in there. There we go, that's plugged in. Right here is the controller plug-in for the, for the fans. All right, now we need to install the controller and plug the power in here. And then we're pretty much done. I'll just kind of wrap these wires up and um, make them look pretty. So the controller, I think, will go, I think we'll go down here below the fan. And they will come out the bottom so it'll be easier to, uh, to use. And this is where we're going to have the control through here. And then we'll have it come out at the bottom, maybe down here somewhere. That's so we can control it. This power will go back in the back. And I'll show you where I'm going to plug this into. Yeah, I've got plenty of spots to plug this in, so I'll just plug it in wherever. That's good. And this fan is not working either, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it with 
just span. It's got some cool LEDs in it, so it should look pretty. And just a heads up, I had three of these fans in a box in my shop. So I'm gonna install all three fans, one in the back and two up top. Okay, now attach the front panel and the side panel of the PC case. Then plug the power cable back into the power supply and then turn the power supply on. And then from the PC case, turn on the power to the PC. And everything should fire up if it's wired correctly. And you can see it's wired correctly. And lastly, I'll go ahead and attach the glass panel. So guys, this is how you replace a CPU cooler. It could look intimidating at first, but it's actually pretty easy. Okay, I wanna show you the RGB colors, a few of them anyways, there's a lot of them here, but we'll go with the mode. It's pretty cool, red. Green, that's kind of changing colors. Off. And guys, don't forget to visit our Patreon page, where $2 a month helps keep this channel going and you'll get a personal shout out from me. So guys, remember, if you like these videos, give a thumbs up and share it. If you love them, hit subscribe to keep this channel alive. Thanks again for watching. Okay. I think I'll go with that when it matches pretty much. It's pretty good.